Well, uh, hello, everybody. So today, um, I'd like to share with you um, a solution that uh, resulted in a happy media cybernetics customer. Um, this particular customer, um, they manufacture small diameter tubing, um, kind of in the order of, you know, hundreds of microns um, to millimeters in size. Um, but kind of as usual, this kind of solution can also be applied, you know, kind of across other industries. Um, you can imagine, you know, maybe holes drilled in, um, you know, circuit boards um, where they're comparing the hole versus the mask um, or, you know, fatty deposits and fish eggs or things like that. Um, kind of any any um, application where the images kind of have superimposed um, circles of varying diameter, of different, di different diameter. Um, or you could also imagine kind of a centralized point um, and then maybe the outside OD may have like an eccentric lobe, like a camshaft or something cut, cut in cross section. So, so there's a lot of different places where this kind of a, a measurement can be made. Um, this particular customer required um, the measurements they needed in inside diameter and outside diameter, um, and as well as a, uh, a measurement of the wall thickness um, at various locations. Um, essentially, they wanted a simple output um, of just images and uh, showing the measurements um, as well as collimated data that was exported out to Excel, and they just made a simple report sheet. Um, here's an example of the different tubes. Um, but, but this is, you know, varying lighting conditions. Uh, they're trying to optimize some of the conditions so they get a little bit better contrast and it helps with some of the measurements. But, but this is kind of a sample of the tube cut in cross section. We don't really have a tool parameter per se that's called concentricity in Image Pro. Um, but as we all know, Image Pro is, you know, a bunch of tools that are very, very powerful. And it's just a matter of kind of putting those tools together uh, to make the software work and provide a solution for you. Um, and this is what we do here in this case also. Um, we use smart segmentation, or if it's simple enough, we can use the basic, you know, bright or dark um, thresholding. And um, after we do a, a count, um, it's, it's important that the filled option uh, not be checked. So we essentially end up with two outline traces, one around the OD and one around the ID. Um, we want to make sure that in our measurement types that we basically have a line length chosen. And um, once we're displaying our data, if we would like to have a color superimposed for the various classifications or classes that have been created um, by the number of bins, um, you can just click on the color um, icon and it gives you a nice color spectrum distribution. And then we can look at a histogram, we can look at a pie chart, um, and uh, this is an example of uh, just a test sample, and you can see that the inside diameter is, is different, um, and it's also shifted um, um, out of place, um, and the numbers of the line segments that are created will get an indication of how far off that is. So if you look at this particular data down on the bottom left, hopefully you can see the numbers, um, something which is offset here. Um, numbers like standard deviation of the line segment lengths or maybe the range um, would be a lot larger than if the um, object uh, center was nicely centered. Um, here's the next image where it is nicely centered and the numbers here for like standard deviation is 0.5. Um, the range is about 1.5 and the previous image where they were offset standard deviation was like 3.5 and the range was like 10 or 11 here. So, so you can see that the, the numbers reflect um, the concentricity or non-concentricity of, um, uh, of a sample. And then of course, like, um, like most things in ImagePro, there's a lot of different ways to represent the, the data. Um, here this image has been um, overlaid with um, line segment values, um, but there's a lot of different ways to, to represent it also. So that, that's the simple um, solution. Um, if you want, we can take a quick peek in Image Pro, and I'll show you kind of how I was going about doing this. Here's a sample, um, kind of two objects, and uh, it may be apparent, but maybe it's not apparent that one is kind of shifted off. Um, I was using a region of interest like this, so I could take basically take two separate measurements and then kind of compare them. So if I drew a region around here, with this particular sample, I can just use dark segmentation and it nicely identifies the, the tubing. 
Um, next thing we want to do is highlight the actual outlines themselves. Um, with the outline present, um, I can't get to the object, so I do have to remove the ROI. Uh, oops, sorry, hang on a second. Let me set my threshold a little bit better. It should just be the center area here. So now if I were to remove that region of interest and, um, hang on a second, let me do my count. So now I've got my count um, for this object contained within the region of interest. Um, I'll measure this other one secondarily. Let me go to select here and just get rid of my region. So if I touch on the object here now, now I have the outline. And again, the function that we use here is under measure, and it's one of these relative tools. And remember, the relative tools can only become available once you highlight um, outlines or traces or two um, to uh, line types, okay? So <clears throat> within the options here, there's a step size, which basically dictates how frequently the line segments will show up around this object. Um, there's different types of um, lines that can show up. And for today, I'll just use shortest, which will measure the shortest distance from the outside to the center. And um, I'll hide the baselines in my values um, when my, in my uh, data table so that they don't show up as some of data. So, so now all I have to do is just click on incremental data, and we see now that we have these lines um, that are propagated here around the object, and they represent the distance from the center um, ID to the outside. You see the lines here, and um, based on the number of bins that you have here, the data will be distributed, and if we wanted to see a color distribution, we can do that here also. So this shows the distribution of those lines around the, um, the tubing, we see a histogram here, and then we've also added recently this pie chart, uh, which is just kind of another way of viewing this, okay? And as always, we can also see it in a data table um, like this and look at a summary of statistics or group them. Um, so there's a lot of way to view this. Um, I also created a, um, a data collector setting here too. So if I collect into my data collector, what I can see now is a one-line summary of my first collection here. And so what I'm looking at is three pieces of data, the mean value, let's say, and the standard deviation, and the range value for this measurement here. And if I wanted to go through now secondarily and choose another object in the field of view, like this one, and then go to count size, tell it it's a dark object like this. Um, I'll do my segmentation here like that. And then I just get rid of the actual region there now. Oops, I did it again. Sorry. Uh, do a region, and we actually want to do a count of that. Now I can get rid of my ROI. Highlight the actual object itself in the lines, and then go to measure. And then again, the relative measurement of incremental distance becomes available. We can click on that. We get our line segments. They show up here again in the histogram, and if I wanted to do that same thing where I colorize them, I can visualize them here. And then if I wanted to add this data into my data collector table, remember um, on each of the tabs that now includes um, any kind of measurements, we actually have added the data collector icon here uh, on the ribbon, which makes it a lot more convenient. So all I have to do is click on data collector here, and now we can see the two sets of data. Um, from our first collection, we have numbers like 94, in the second one it's 99, so these segments, um, the average line length was obviously larger here, and our distribution in our ranges are higher also. So anyway, this was um, sufficient for what the customer needed, and uh, they were really happy, and they were able to do quality control on, um, on their samples. Just a quick um, version um, of the actual sample itself. Um, you know, basically you can use the same kind of routine you go through. In this case, it's a bright segmentation. We have a, an object here like this, and I'm just going to get rid of these guys here, or let me apply a filter range. And if I count that, so now I have these objects here, highlighting the outside, go to measure, and uh, just do incremental distances. We see all the line segments here show up. We can do our distribution, and again, if I wanted to add it to our data collector, all I have to do is click on the data collector icon.